In late December 2019, the Charlton Board of Selectmen appointed a steering committee comprised of Charlton resident volunteers. The committee is seeking private and corporate donations intended to lower the amount to be borrowed and the tax burden on Charlton residents to construct a new public safety building. The current size of today's headquarters is uh, very constricting. We've had at times six vehicles in a five bay garage just to keep the apparatus out of the weather. Headquarters was built in the 1950s and originally was two bays. We've added on. It's now a five bay building. A uh, second floor was added on. Our gear is situated along the walls and with the tight cramped space, it's very difficult for individuals to get their gear on in a timely fashion. So it's just been a haphazard fit the need type of thing. Station two is basically a used highway building that was given to us by highway. Marine One is our boat and it's stuck behind an ambulance and a tanker. And in order to go for a water rescue call, we have to pull out those pieces of apparatus and then pull the boat out. Very difficult and time consuming and any rescue uh, seconds matter. There's no bathroom in that building, so they've provided us with an outhouse located in the rear. When the rain comes in, we've got to physically go up there and sweep the rainwater buildup out of the building. Water damage has been extensive, and we've had rust in the undercarriages. Brakes have rusted out. And then Station 3, which is across the street from headquarters, we had to have built in order to house a tower apparatus. We had to lease a piece of land from a citizen in order to build a Quonset hut to be able to store that apparatus. The current building is insufficient for our ALS operation that we uh, use today and is the standard across EMS agencies across the country. We have very limited space to house all new supplies. We have all new drugs that are on board in ALS service. So in order to maintain the security and safety of those uh, drugs, we need to have secured locking positions within the building. Very difficult due to the space constraints that we have. The building that was built in the 1950s clearly did not have the foresight of where EMS and fire were gonna go in the 2000s. 30 years ago when this building was built, it was built for a much different style of policing. Over the years, the building was adapted and we are finally at a breaking point where the building is not adaptable anymore. The lobby is a very busy area. On any given day, you could have someone in the lobby to renew their firearms license, a mother exchanging a child during a child exchange, and a sex offender in the lobby to register. This is all a very small area for all this activity to go on with no privacy. The state currently requires areas of the building to be updated, such as a juvenile lockup facility. It needs to be separated from the adult lockup. We're not able to do that right now. One of the safety issues is the booking area. We can only book one prisoner at a time. In doing so, if there are multiple prisoners, we have to find a way to handle the second person or third or more. Our current garage bays are not big enough to fit an ambulance into. Oftentimes, a prisoner will have to go to the hospital. The ambulance will park in front of the police station and the prisoner will be brought out through the booking room, through dispatch, through the main lobby to get to the ambulance. There is no elevator in this building. Anytime someone needs to go from the top floor to the bottom floor and they're not able to do the staircase, they do need to go outside of the building and around the building to come into the back door. The outside areas of the building are limited in parking. When residents come, they cannot find spots often. They either park on the lawn or in unauthorized places for them to park. When the cruisers are parked and not being used and there's a snowstorm, there's no overhang or garages to secure all these cruisers in. It will often take hours to uncover the snow off these cruisers and get them ready for use for each shift. When we bring evidence into the building, it, it's a very non-streamlined fashion that it travels through a great distance throughout the building where it eventually gets secured. A much more streamlined process would be beneficial for court proceedings as well as the safety of officers. Across the whole country, there's been cases of fentanyl found inside of drugs. Exposure to the building from this fentanyl could be very dangerous for anyone in the whole area. The Charlton Public Safety Building Committee, as well as the Public Safety Building Capital Campaign Steering Committee, asks for your support on this project. Get involved, ask questions, call your local police chief and fire chief 
to see tours of the facilities so you can see the struggles that they're working with on a daily basis. For more information on this project or funding the capital campaign, visit the Town of Charlton's website at townofcharlton.net and click on the link to the Charlton Public Safety Building Capital Campaign Steering Committee for more information on the project and how you can donate. Thank you.